I do want to say my condolences go out to Mayor Frank Leake from the Village Colony. Uh, Ma Mayor Leake was uh, a great man and uh, fought a good battle and 93 years old. And I got to tell you, when I first met him, I couldn't believe he was in his 80s. He had the energy of a 20-year-old. So uh, you'll be duly missed and loved and uh, remembered. So again, to Mayor Leake's family, our condolences and love. The other thing I just want to uh, let everyone know, we had one person, Ashley, we said was ours, Albany County resident, was a Rensselaer County resident. So we had one person pass away yesterday. One was a Rensselaer County resident, a woman in her 80s. So my condolences and prayers go out to that family. Um, but it was a Rensselaer County resident. And that happens because when you're trying to get up to date data quickly and get it out there, um, unfortunately, this sometimes happens and uh, it did. So, again, today marks 253 days since it started, back on March 12th, and, uh, you know, we're still here, and we're still trying to get out. One of the things I just want to verify, I know it's been like a big discussion about herd um, immunity or herd protection, and, uh, you know, uh, we pulled up a great article, and I think the main doctor says it's best, total nonsense. You know, if you want to get everyone with the herd protection, that means you have to infect over a million, pe millions of people, and that means you could lose over a million people in this country. So even our talk, our big doctor says, no way, doesn't work, can't go down that road. And I keep hearing discussion and people on Facebook keep sending us messaging or emails. People are talking about it on radio shows, um, please. Read, read what the doctor says, and basically it cannot happen. It would have to infect 50 to 90% of the people in this country. And with 30% of the people with underlying health issues, it would have a devastating effect. So uh, it doesn't work. It won't work for this case. And, uh, you know, we have to wait for the vaccine to get out, and hopefully we'll get out in a timely manner so everyone can get taken care of. So as of today, we have 4,760 positive cases of COVID-19 in Albany County. 1,941 people are currently under mandatory quarantine. We have a total increase again today of 94 positive cases overnight. That's 1,197 new positive cases since November 1st. That's more than 25% of the total positive cases since the outbreak began a month, a month ago. Of the new positives for today, we also have 27 have had close contact to positive cases, nine are healthcare workers, five people reported traveling outside the state, and then again, we have a big number, 53 do not have a clear source of infection. Some good news on that, though, um, making grounds. That's more than 56% of the cases couldn't tell us where they had contact of the virus. It's a little bit down from 60, so which is better. People are starting to be honest and opened up. So. I do want to take a moment to remind people that the information you provide to the contract investigators or contract tracers is totally and completely confident. So if I say I was with Billy Walsh and you go to him and call him, you're not going to call Bill up and say, hey, Bill, guess what? You know, Dr. Whalen told us you guys were together and she has COVID-19, you know, so it doesn't work that way doesn't work that way. They just do their job, and Dr. Whelan can talk about that more. This information would never be used to prosecute someone or use against them. You definitely have my word on that. We just need you to be truthful. The information provides us, allows us to identify potential clusters or hotspots that help prevent people from getting sick or even worse. Turning to the numbers, 19,896 people have completed quarantine, almost 20,000. 3,984 tested positive for the virus and have recovered. That's 35 recoveries today, since yesterday. Currently, there's 44 people in the hospital with new, three new hospitalizations overnight, with a hospitalization rate of 0.92% of those who have tested positive yesterday, the rate was at 0.94%. 10 patients are currently in the ICU. Yesterday, that number was 11. Over the last five days, it's been an average of 76.4 new positive cases each day. 
Yesterday it was over 87. I say to people, please avoid big crowds, avoid going out if you don't have to, wear your mask, socially distance, cough into your arm, and clean your hands. Continue to do the right thing and we'll get through this. And uh, we need everyone to be in this together to get through it because we can't do it alone and we need everyone to fully buy into this. So one of the best tools we have to be back the virus is getting tested. So please, there's a lot of testing sites available in Albany County. We launched a new website you can go to. It makes it easier to locate a location, time weights. If you have to make an appointment, if you don't have to make an appointment and walk in, uh, you know, I mean, we have Whitney Young, you have any price shopper, Walgreens, and so many others that I could go on about that are actually out there doing it and people that are providing tests to children. So please go to albanycounty.com. The information's there and uh, you can get a full list of the best way and the quickest way of getting tested. So again, Whitney Young, if you don't have insurance, the county pays. You Albany, you don't pay. The other ones you go to, some of them charge you, some of them don't, depends on your insurance. So you might want to ask that question too. So that's, we get a lot of feedback on that too, that people didn't know they had to pay this or pay that. So I would recommend that you look into that before you uh, go. So our Whitney Young testing site, you can always call, please, at 518-465-4771. And uh, you, Albany, as always, and all the other numbers. And again, please help us get through this and we can do this together. Dr. Whalen. Thanks, Kenny, Executive McCoy. So our work at the local health department continues to be very busy, um, primarily with the increase in cases, uh, but also with preparation activities around assisting schools for testing of their 20% uh, should we enter into a microcluster zone. And we are also starting to plan for vaccine um, receipt and deployment. We have said since day one that uh, this would continue until there was a safe, effective, and widely available vaccine. But there's another part to that too. We are going to need to do uh, a lot of work and a communication so that we have confidence in the vaccine. Um, we are going to have to determine how the vaccine is deployed. Uh, this is, I, um, many of you saw me come in to the press conference today on a call, and that call was uh, convened by NISAC and NYSHO on uh, vaccine, uh, and I was listening to a CDC um, doc talk about how this is going to occur. We're learning more every single day and beginning this preparedness um, beginning the, all the activities around um, preparing for receipt and deployment of the vaccine. We know that uh, the epidemiology of the disease will help inform how the vaccine is deployed. What does that mean? That means that we will be looking at giving people who are the highest risk um, and our first responders that we need to continue the infrastructure of the health system. Uh, for vaccination. Um, we'll know more in days and weeks. Um, many of you have heard that there are currently um, two vaccines that have been developed um, from Pfizer and Moderna, and we look forward to more being released in the coming days and weeks. Um, there are challenges that we will face, particularly with the Pfizer and the necessity of cold chain um, requirements that that vaccine needs. Uh, but we'll be needing to give a lot more information to the public. And, you know, particularly in New York State, we, we know the governor is convening uh, an additional um, task force to look at vaccine safety. We know that this is going to be very important to provide as much information as we get to the public going forward. And I can give you my personal um, guarantee that I would not recommend a vaccine that I would not take myself. So going forward, uh, it is really going to be a job both um, from our perspective and uh, from certainly your perspective in the media to be able to get that information and share it with the public so that we can have confidence in the vaccine. It is likely that we will not have widespread dissemination of the vaccine to the general public until late spring and early summer. 
So this means that we do need to continue to uh, embrace the difficult um, challenges that we have lived with daily since the beginning of uh, March. We are going to need to continue to implement public health strategies to protect ourselves and our families, continue to wear masks, continue to social distance, uh, continue to, uh, to frequently hand wash, and really weigh up whether um, when you're heading out the door it is something uh, that could put you at risk and, and how you could modify your behavior. This is going to change things going forward. I know this. It has changed all of us um, at many levels in the way that we consider how we conduct our daily life. There have been many challenges associated with that, um, many sacrifices that people have made personally, uh, that um, people have made uh, you know, in the communities that they live with. And you know, I, again, appreciate the cooperation of all of you that understand the gravity of this. As the county executive indicated, herd immunity is not the answer. You know, county or countries that have adopted this strategy have seen catastrophic mortality rates, um, and they have seen issues with hospital surge capacity. They have had to backtrack on this idea. We have never advocated for this idea because we knew that the risk for hospital surge and for mortality was too great. But even with the protection strategies that we've employed that have not been embraced by the entire country, we have lost 250,000 residents of this country. So it's important, again, to continue to double down on these behaviors. And um, you know, we look forward to working with each and every one of you going forward uh, to keep the residents of Albany County safe. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Whelan, as always. And uh, again, we're in this together. And I don't know, I want to try to say this right. It's, it's um, hardest thing is when you're in a combat zone in your military, you get this numb feeling. You, get, you start to think you're Superman. And you kind of forget the hazard zone that you're in because you feel like you're invincible or you just get numb to the mission because you've been away from your loved ones and family. Uh, soldiers that have been downrange know what I'm talking about, and it's kind of like the COVID-19. People are really starting to get like, all right, it's here, I'm over it, um, I'm not going to get it, or, you know, it's like chicken pox, I'm going to spread it to everybody in the family, and, uh, you know, it's not the right answers, it's hard, and I know this is hard, and it's been eight months, and it's going to be harder, and I'm not here to scare people. Um, you know, it's when I said, somebody goes, how'd you figure out with May? Because <laughs> talking to Dr. Whalen, knowing how the vaccine's going to get out, it's not going to get to everyone right away. It's going to take time. And you might not see masks not being worn until about the fall of next year. It's just the reality of life we're in. And that's why I said it's a marathon, not, not a marathon, not a sprint. And we're in this together. And we need to be in it. And we need to stop thinking we're Superman or Superwoman or being numb about the whole situation. We need buy-in from restaurant owners to people, the patrons, to people to wear their masks, to enforce mask wearing in the workplace. Not to let your guard down because you've been with the same people and I could go on. We need your help and we need your help to get through this and we can get through this if we all help one another out. And I, you know, I just wanna say again what I said yesterday, we need to be proactive and make small, small sacrifices for the greater good of our community and our state because we're all in this together. We're all New Yorkers and we'll get through this. Trust me, we'll get through it and it's gonna be difficult. And it has been difficult. It has changed many people's lives. Uh, I don't know how better to explain it than the feeling I had when I went downrange. That it just kind of reminds me. I started to get numb myself. Things stop bothering you, and that's not good. When things stop bothering you, and you're like, ah, eh, all right, you know, we're here. That's where we're at. Up, oh, we're at 92 again. We're at 147, and, and that's when you got to take a step back, take a deep breath, and re-energize your batteries. And remember, it's not done with us. It's here. So switching gears a little bit, I do want to remind everyone, we do have our OmniCounty.com to go to our department, Children, Youth, and Family for Adopt-A-Family. 
Uh, make a difference in someone's life. If you want to feel good and do something different, make a difference. Toys for Tot, whatever your charity is, please come out. Make a difference. Make sure someone has something. So a little bit of hope at the end of the tunnel. Uh, you can make a difference in a kid's life. And uh, please, you can go online and you can see what some of these kids are asking for because it's not big stuff. Uh, also, uh, I just want to remember again, mental health is there, not just for adults, for children. Parents take the time, talk to your kids. Uh, it's difficult for them when they can't go out down the street and play and uh, they can't see their kids in school. And it's only going to get harder. It's going to get harder with the winter here. So take the time, talk to your kids. It's just not you going through it, it's your children or just anyone in your life. Take the time. Knock on your neighbor's door in an apartment complex or your neighbor next door, socially distance, and just check on them and smile at them and say hello and see if they need anything. But the mental health support's available seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., 518-269-6634. Our 24-hour sexual assault hotline number, as always, our 211 with the United Way and the New York State hotline, as always, is always there. Please be safe, do the right thing, and we'll get through this.